If you get resin in your eye pouring it in, you're quite talented. You want to go to space? Uh, this won't actually take you to space, but this is a really cool 3D printer. It's not like the Prusas of old. This is a resin printer. It's called an MSLA printer, or masked SLA printer. And it prints using light. But first, we gotta get it out of the box. Resin printers aren't as mechanically strong, or resin printed parts, rather, but they get much higher detail than FDM, or fused deposition modeling prints. Up first, we have the Astrofab Getting Started Guide. We've got a QR code that I'm definitely going to scan. And safety. It's actually really important to read these. Uh, the thing with resin printing is the resins themselves will uh, go through your hands and you can have really bad allergic reactions. So always wear gloves. Okay, this paper can be used for leveling. It's probably literally just paper, but you essentially want just a little bit of a gap between where the build plate starts in the print. So there's a thin film of resin underneath it. So this is our build platform. It's about two and a half inches by four inches, something like that. Aluminum, we've got the, the four point hinged alignment mechanism. This is our build vat. So this holds our liquid resin and on the bottom is what we call a FEP. It's a, a thin sheet of plastic that will let you cure your part onto it and then you pull up and you'll hear it go and then the, the part will release. A fresh layer of resin will go down and the build plate will go back into it. It's uh, also got a neat little spout here. So when you do want to change resins, it's actually not so bad to pour. This is uh, another neat feature of this particular printer is its HEPA filter. So it has a particulate and a charcoal filter on the back here to try and reduce the fumes. Power supply. So now this machine only uses 50 watts. It's little, you can run it off a little wall work. A scraper. Okay, we've got uh, three Allen keys, quality inspection that I'm sure wasn't mass produced and just shoved in every bag. This is a resin squeegee. So this you would use in the vat. If you have a part that fails, you wanna scrape all the solid parts off. And that's what this is for and it won't damage your, your FEP. This guy is for scraping off your parts from your build plate. Different squeegees, don't mix them up. I wanna see the actual printer because this thing is kinda cool. Oh gosh. Thanks to Zoho CRM for sponsoring this video. Zoho CRM is a 360 degree solution for managing your business's sales, marketing, and customer service. With their intuitive UI and simple navigation, you can implement their service quickly and efficiently. They offer AI predictions to help you with insights and to understand your customer's needs. Plus, their inbuilt design studio helps you customize your experience to help you spot critical information at a glance. Zoho offers flexible contracts, transparent pricing, and an ever-evolving product that grows to meet your needs without snowballing costs. Get 50% off your annual subscription when you use code ZCRM50 using the link in the video description below. I'm gonna put this on the ground, lift it up. Ta-da! Look at it, Spaceman! Whoa, that's actually really cool. Does this chin drop down? Oh, that does come out. Okay, so we have a 2.8 inch touchscreen display. We've got a six inch 2K monitor. We've got the LED array underneath it. And then we just have one moving part, this Z axis. So our bed will slide on something like this. Uh, let's get this thing plugged in and uh, see what it's like to actually work with. And then we're gonna figure out how to change this visor. Yellow, we got green, orange. I feel like Matt Damon. Actually looks to be somewhat tool free. Oh, it comes pre-switched on. That's not great. There's our, uh, our display. We got print system and tools. So we can move our Z axis. This isn't super great. In here, there's just a big, can you see this? Big old glob of, of grease. I'm just gonna spread that like they intended. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Uh, John, could you grab me a paper towel? So this is a, uh, a visor detect. So it can detect when the, the hood is open or closed. That's somewhat of a safety feature, but it'll also automatically pause when you lift the helmet up. Boop, okay, that's easy enough. There we go. So back here is clearly where the HEPA filter goes. Now this is sealed in a bag because uh, carbon filters, they kind of decompose after a while. So now that it's out of the bag, cat's out of the bag, it will be uh, active and they do need to be changed regularly. So we have a linear rail here. So it has recirculating ball bearings that keep it rigid in all other axes except one. Got a screw to drive it. Down here we have a little Hall effect sensor that detects when the platform's at its bottom. So our first step will be to calibrate it. Bring the platform down with a piece of paper under it, set it to be level, 
tighten it up, raise it up, fill it with resin, and then we can uh, we can start printing with this thing and see what it can do. I don't know what that is, but cool. It's the sort of thing that I would say is not great. Um, that's a, a hair or some sort of manufacturing gunk stuck under the FEP. Now, the biggest cause of failures in resin 3D printers is when the FEP fails, and all of a sudden you have 250 milliliters of resin pour into your machine, and then it starts to harden, and everything is hooped. So I do have some problems with this printer on price alone. So this printer is based on an Anycubic Photon uh, Mono, and that printer is 200 bucks. So what do you get for your extra money? Well, you get, you get the Spaceman hood, you get the hood detection, and you get a HEPA filter. Is that worth 130 bucks? Maybe. John, I was wrong. So we're gonna home it, and it should come down, touch, and then raise up a little bit, and that's where we're gonna lock it. A little switch will come down, it'll detect it. There we go, it didn't crash. This good. This just ensures you don't like crank on it and then have it torque it out of alignment. Perfect. Okay, we'll go raise it up. Okay, vet is tight. Definitely remember to tighten the vat in. Don't ask me how I know. I'm gonna pull this out for a minute. Then we get to pick a resin. Resin! You want green? Okay, we do green just for you. I just love the design of these bottles. <laughs> Is that not the cutest thing? I kinda wanna get them all out. There we go, look at the little guys. Isn't that cute? Now I can actually show you how the light works before we pour resin in it, which you won't be able to see through. So we have the screen under here and we're gonna blast light up. Now if you have a failed print and you need to clean your bed, normally you'd run a whole screen's worth, so <clears throat> essentially no pixels covering the light and you'd cure a whole layer of resin and then you would peel that up and it comes with all the leftovers that have settled to the bottom of the tank. So I'll close it for safety, start. Should, oh, there it is. Yeah, you see it? I can't see anything through this orange. I, I see the purple. We're going green. I'm gonna make sure not to get this in my eyes. We're not gonna fill it up to max because we're not gonna use a ton of it. Oh yeah, there's, there's some smell. Not horrible. And what are we gonna print here? Giraffe. You want the giraffe? Yeah. So print. So what's happening is it's going to cure for about two seconds, give or take. It'll sit for another second or two, and it's gonna peel. And we'll see it lift. And it'll go. We should hear a pop if everything's going correctly. The first layer often will cure longer, nine to 12 seconds. So you get a good adhesion to the aluminum plate. Hear that? Yeah, so that's peeling off of the FEP. We're back. It's been a day, or rather a night, and our print has completed. So let's get this guy out. Try and drip off any of this resin. And there we are. So now this is uncured resin. So it's it's done a, a soft cure, but we need to wash it, which we'll do in this water bath. And then we can cure it either outside in the sun or we have a curing chamber that we'll go use in a minute here. It's kind of cute. If we look at the chamber, because we had the hood open and lights on, you can see we've got a like a, a solid chunk <laughs> hmm. that, that formed. So uh, that's garbage. But that's why we have this UV filtering hood is to prevent that from happening. Okay, let's, uh, let's try water washing this. This is where I was really curious. Now, admittedly, I'm not a great resin printer. Uh, if you wanna see resin printing content, look at Uncle Jesse on YouTube. It's pretty great. This is always the hardest part. I, uh, oh, hey, that was easy. There's a little guy. It is soft. So we'll go stick this in the curing chamber. Uh, we're in the shop now, and uh, I can show off our enormous Frozen Sonic Mega. Uh, that is a large resin printer. You can print like whole helmets and stuff in this. But we're not using this guy. We're using the curing chamber, which I haven't used before. And we just pop our print in. 
shut the door and press play. UV LEDs came on, the bed will spin, and it'll cure our part. And in 10 minutes, we'll have like an actually hard part. It's been 10 minutes. Now that it's cured, I can touch it with my hands. And from here, you can paint it, do whatever, but it's made. Does it print? Sure does. Is it the best value for your money? I don't think so. I think you can do a little better, but it's got a cool little gimmick. Not much is nice. And uh, if you liked this video, get subscribed to Short Circuit. And uh, why don't you go hop on over to LTT and check out my uh, cheapest 3D printer video. That thing was tiny and pretty crappy, but it did sort of print. See you later.